Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, continuing our study on the power of prayer. Now this is part two of the series, so if you haven't done so already, go and check out part one. In that first part, we went over verses 124 and 125. I also gave a short testimony about my prayer life and how it has evolved over time. But in this video, we want to start here at verse 126 and continue our discussion on the power of prayer. 126 says, Thought and the Spirit, united in prayer, created in mankind a force superior to any human strength. See, this is why we give so many classes on prayer. Superior to any human strength? Prayer is the most important ability that any of us have. Some of us may be strong, some of us may be intelligent, some of us may be fast, and some of us may be wealthy, but none can match the superior force of prayer. Where our thoughts and spirit are united, we learned in another class called the weapons of the 144,000 how that makes us invincible if we know how to pray troubles come as they may we will never be defeated verse 127 says in prayer the weak are strengthened the coward dressed in courage the ignorant are illuminated and the clumsy are made able this is why we pray before we take on any task when we pray, we actually call on supernatural forces to help us, giving us strength when we need it. That's why people are able to do miraculous stuff. It is because of prayer. It could give us the courage we need when we find ourselves in dangerous circumstances. Remember that we have the tribulation coming. We are going to need courage. And we can get that courage through our prayer. Look right there how it says the ignorant are illuminated. We learn in other parts of the Third Testament from which this scripture comes from that we don't need books in order to learn stuff. We can learn from angels simply by praying for it. It reminds me of the Matrix when the guy would call in to the operator and he would download files to his brains that's a movie version of what prayer actually does for us and see how it says in the clumsy made able we get these and many other abilities by way of prayer this is the power of prayer let's look at 128 it says the spirit when it has achieved harmony with the mind in order to reach true prayer this is part of our spiritual evolution that is talking about here we're starting to realize that we have a spirit being inside of us not just the Holy Spirit but our own spirit the real us when our spirits achieve harmony with our minds in order to reach true prayer that spirit becomes an invisible soldier who leaves behind for a few moments that which touches his being see one thing about our material form our bodies is it puts a lot of limitations on us that our spirits don't otherwise have it is necessary for us to evolve spiritually so we can take off some of these limitations and start giving our spirits the freedom it needs to do what's talked about here it says that our spirits passes to other places frees itself from the influences of the material and gives itself over to the struggle to do good we've heard many times through the scripture how our flesh is wicked well our spirit is opposite to our flesh Whereas our flesh is inundated by material things, our spirit man is really only attracted to spiritual things. Our spirit man wants to do good. 
to banish danger and evil. This is why we have to learn how to pray. To achieve this harmony between our spirits and our mind. So that we can banish danger and evil that is taken over the world. Imagine how this world would end up if none actually learned to do this. If evil was actually allowed to win. We can't let that happen. Not in the world. And not in our personal lives either. So here in verse 128, we're learning what happens when our spirit achieves harmony with the mind. Right here it says, it bears within a glimmer of light, a drop of balm, and a breath of peace to the needy. This is talking about our ability to heal people. That's what it means by a drop of balm. This is why we need to evolve spiritually. This is what it means when it said struggle to do good. Humanity needs us to get this right. Whether they know it or not, spiritual Israel, we are their only hope. Talking about the power of prayer. Verse 129 says, for all I tell you, understand how much you can do with the mind and spirit. In the midst of the chaos in which man is immersed, the power of prayer. With all of the chaos that the world is going through, we have the most effective tool by way of our mind and our spirit. We just have to learn to take advantage of this power. You are in a world of conflict and thoughts and ideas where passions for materialism are alive and the spirits navigate in darkness. I believe this is because the majority of the world doesn't know the power of prayer. Most people don't pray. And even the ones that do, don't do it right. So the world is inundated by darkness, materialism, conflicting thoughts and ideas. 130 says, only he who has learned through prayer to elevate himself in thought and spirit to the regions of light, to the dwellings of peace, may penetrate without being defeated to the world of contention, where all human passions are reflected, leaving in exchange something of value for those who have need of the light of the spirit. It says only he who has learned through prayer to elevate himself in thought and spirit to the regions of light has this ability. We have to mature spiritually. Even though I was considered a Bible expert by many around me, I didn't know how to pray. And now, after I've learned to do so correctly, and I listen and others try, most people don't get it right. My intention is not to shame anyone or make anyone feel bad. My job is to educate those that want to listen and want to learn and want to get it right, want to learn how to pray, want to learn how to wage an effective battle in this war that's going on. When we're able to elevate ourselves in thought and spirit to regions of light, to the dwellings of peace, then we may penetrate without being defeated to the world of contention. We become invincible. The world can't touch us. We can be effective on the front lines of this battle and never worry about being harmed by it. Where all human passions are reflected, those passions that he's talking about are things like hate, selfishness, maliciousness, infidelity. These are the principalities and powers that we fight against. It is not flesh and blood that we're fighting against. It is these passions that are destroying humanity. But when we're able to hone our abilities and our powers, taking advantage of the power of prayer, 
We can go into these battlefields. We can fight against these passions, leaving in exchange something of value for those who have need of light and spirit. We can touch their hearts. We can make a difference. The power of prayer gives us the ability to make a difference. Let's make a difference. Our Father bless you and keep you. May our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace.